okay, those secret forces that come in out of nowhere from the industry that go directly to your artists and start speaking in that ear. Who are these people? I mean, a lot of time it's street guys, it's family members, you know, it's girlfriends, you know, you gotta think. You go from not getting played, not really having that many women, then now you got the most beautiful women in the world telling you anything you wanna hear. And, and you know, they speaking only from their perspective, They're not speaking from a business perspective. They're mm -hmm. just telling you what you wanna hear. Yeah. And, um, you know, them locker room, them pillow talk conversations, different, man. They hit different. I mean, I just got to throw this out here, too. What about when you got an artist and then the label try to come and give your artist their own deal? Yeah. I How got, does that go? I mean, that actually happened to me. I mean, after all the success, you know, they came in and offered Akon a situation. Like, Universal was like, yo, um, they bypassed me, offered my man everything, but then realized that we had an exclusive recording agreement a deal. I mean, recording um, contract. Yeah. So... At that moment, he had to come back to me and ask me what was my take on it, because mm. he needed my signature. Yeah. And I said, nah, I ain't, I'm not signing that, mm -hmm. you know? And he was like, what do you mean? My man pitched a fit. What do you mean you're not signing that? Dang. I said, because what if I tell you I got a better play for you? Mm. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, I got a better, yada, yada, yada. we arguing back and forth. I said, oh, man, listen, I got this. I said, what if I tell you I can take you to a label that build artists, because really, Akon was a producer first. Mm. So what if I tell you that the next guy I'm going to bring in, he rock with producers and songwriters? Mm. And that's who you are first. The artist thing is really was like kind of secondary. Akon just started demoing out the records. Yeah. I took him to Jimmy Iovine. Mm. So. I pulled him out of Universal SRC for a label deal, mm -hmm. left the artist deal there, but took his label deal to Interscope. Mm. And when we went there, and that's when we signed, uh, we partnered with Vincent Herbert mm -hmm. um, to do Lady Gaga. My God. So now you're talking about Con Live right there. Yeah. With Lady Gaga, seeing the success that she had. Yeah. What was that like? Doing it all over again. But then I got to ask you this, though, Divine. Mm -hmm. You've seen this over and over and over again since she was five years old. So <laughs> is it the same every time or does it feel a little bit more special this go round? Man, you know, I always tell people that I'm really not talented. Mm -hmm. People say, you know, the talent, he got talent, he got talent. I'm not talented. I really, I'm gifted. Yeah. And I think, you know, and the gift comes from God. So I, I have to continue to just glorify God's gift. And I, I find myself in very unique um, situations um, just throughout the years. After the Con Live situation, how did you and Akon wind up just splitting and going y'all on separate ways? Or well, or I think that at that way? moment, it was more so it was a lot of interference, man. A lot of interference. A lot of street play. Mm. You know, we had to run in with Suge Knight. You know, I had extortion, guys trying to extort me oh um, in the music business. I mean, it was just, it was a lot. Being in LA, that water is different. Mm. Um, so, um, Akon actually moved to LA, um, bought a house there, set up shop, you know, and by having the name Convict, it attracts certain things. So, sure. a lot of convicts came, you know, to work. I think at one point he was hiring all convicts. Damn. Um, so, it, it just got to a point where um, I'm coming from another era. Yeah. And my man wanted to do something different, which was cool. Um, you know, I, I figured that it'll be global music, you know, mm. not really street music. Mm -hmm. You just said something about extortion, man. Mm. You over here trying to live your dream and make your money and have the time of your life. Yeah. Nobody wants to find out in the shadows you got folks trying to extort people. Yeah. What's going through your mind during these times where you're thinking, I done worked hard as hell to get this goddamn money, and now these folks trying to take it from me? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it feels like a stimulus check. <laughs> 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 you know, they give it to you and you're going to spin it back on everything. You have to commit it. Yeah, but I think, I think um, for me, you know, I've been in the music business for a long time, so I, I had 
I had a lot of the answers already. Okay. It's kind of like a crossword puzzle with the answer at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I already knew the answer, <laughs> right? But that doesn't stop the process. Mm. So people coming in to get the money, whatever, I'm a giver. So yeah. it's not even about let's take something. Yeah. It's about let's build something. Yeah. And majority of the people that was coming to take weren't willing to build. So that's how I just start weaving them out. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, I ain't never really have any, you know, uh, gunplay issues or nothing violent, you know, that really, really went on. You know, a couple push-ups, a couple bumps, and, you know, um, nothing really happened. I even had um, something so crazy where the company um, used to book my itinerary. Mm. And they would get a street dude. They, I mean, they would book my flights and hotel. They would get a street dude's my itinerary. Mm -hmm. So the dude knew where I was the whole time. And I didn't know that how it was coming, but it was coming from the companies. I kept saying, hi, you know where I'm at, you know, the whole time. <laughs> Every time I land, I walk in the building. If I walk in the building, take a meeting, I run into the guy. So I'm like, wow, this, you know, so they put the pressure on me. Um, and I think that's just when, you know, when the check came, you know, they were sending their people and trying to position their people on all levels. I mean, you got to think um, when we get in this game and we get we make money, the first thing we think we're going to go white. Mm -hmm. So we start hiring white people mm. immediately. We we so do you see the change happen way before you ain't got to wait. You know, it's like first we had a black attorney because we couldn't afford an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. So after that attorney, then you hire a white attorney. Yeah. Because then when you get the white attorney, then they're going to put all their colleagues in place. Mm. So next thing you know, then that becomes your business model. Um, and it could take you to the next level, but it's also a learning curve. If you don't know and you don't take time out to read uh, contracts and, and you don't know the business and then you don't have anybody to kind of govern how the business work or even give you the information. So a lot of that was just kind of learning. So I feel like even now, I was really just learning. I really mm -hmm. feel like now I'm more, more prone to do business now than I was then because um, back then I was just winging it. Now yeah. I have the information. Now I know a little bit more about financing on, on, on a lot of different label, um, fronts, not just the music front, but I also learn how the publishing game works. I also learned how the licensing game work, the streaming game work. Mm -hmm. So all those things, kind of like just going through this maze and kind of like who moved my cheese? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But also graduating, you know, graduating yeah. along the way. So, and a lot of those street guys, they're not even here no more, they're in jail. You know, you just gotta be able to press through and, uh, and just stay with it. And that's what I was able to do, man.